John Smoltz set to join us. John was on the call uh, last night. He'll be on the call again tonight. Johnny joining us uh, from a golf course here and uh, kind enough to join us. Uh, John, let me start with Dusty Baker goes out and takes out his pitcher. Uh, can you plead your case that you want to stay in, in into the game? You allowing the guy to have a feel for the game in that point to get himself out of that game, either take him out much earlier, but once it got bases loaded, that's a very difficult spot to put anybody in. I don't care if a, a reliever's never given up a run. You come in with the bases loaded, no room for error. It was almost as if they anticipated that Pena was going to bunt, then they were going to bring in Alvarado. But every move has worked so far for Philly. It's hard to kind of criticize some of the moves. But last night was an impossible situation for one of their best pitchers. Was that a no-hitter? Uh, it was. It wasn't the no-hitter that, um, you know, Don Drysdale pitched by any means, and his was a perfect game. But, you know, anytime you do something that is very difficult, whether it's five pitchers or two pitchers, it's a pretty incredible feat at this time of the year. You know, nobody had shut down the Philadelphia lineup. Nobody. No starting pitcher, no collective staff. And this was, uh, this was much needed for Houston. If they were going to win the series, they had to kind of punch the boys that were uh, – making uh, a mockery of all the starting pitching at home. You mentioned, I think, Don Drysdale, Don Larson through the... Uh, Don Larson, yeah, sorry about through, that. That's through, right. through the perfect game. But you start to look at this, is this just a one-off? Kyle Schwarber said, hey, I don't care if we got no hit, we lost a game, but how big of a loss is this or how big of a win is this for the Astros? I think it's a bigger win for the Astros. They have more depth and they're more confident in their ability to pitch because they've done that all year. Uh, for the Phillies, just another loss. That's exactly what I would say, whether you, you, you know, it's sometimes better to lose this way than lose by one run every time you get in a situation where you could answer a question like, what if this would have happened? So I think for really the Phillies, no big deal. They've got a tough task today. And if they get back on their offensive game plan and take, fair, take care of mistakes, they'll be up 3-2 going in. But they're in a tough one when it comes to uh, Justin Verlander being able to make adjustments from game to game. But how does he make that adjustment? He didn't look good at all. He's never won a World Series game. What are the adjustments? Well, that, like, what's different for Justin Verlander? The biggest thing is I think he'll realize mechanically what he has to do after those first nine he got out. He was on point. He was exposing the weaknesses of the Philly uh, offense. And then whatever the delay or whatever happened, he got out of his mechanics, in my opinion, lost the command of his fastball. We saw last night when a man has his fastball going like Javier did, it's very difficult to hit. And Justin has the same capability with that four-seam fastball to expose the weaknesses of any hitter. He did it perfectly for nine innings. Sometimes you can be too passionate, want it too much. I'm not saying that he fell into that category, but when you have a 5 nothing lead, that's a great feeling to have. And the next thing you know, you're in a tight game and you're answering the same question. So I'm sure – He'll be paying attention to those details because Justin Verlander is one of the best. Was Lance McCullers tipping his pitches? Game three. I think there was a. I think there was a portion of which he was tipping. I don't think it's where everybody was making it out. There's a lot of experts at home. They can freeze their TV, see things that they think they're seeing. But the reality is, out of the stretch with the glove, that's possibly the way that you can eliminate. If you can eliminate one pitch, in, one pitch at a time, or one pitch in a repertoire, you've got a huge advantage. But let's be honest, and I think he said it well, he, he left a lot of pitches in the zone. Even if you know it's coming and you execute your pitch, you're going to get out. He struck out five guys. He got nine or eight in a row out of the windup. So I would say that out of the stretch, yes, there was a probably with the glove, that's the common uh, fault of a pitcher, is you, you tilt your glove one way or another. Once you know one pitch, you can eliminate the other. And I think there was no doubt that they were sitting on pitches. And let's, let's be honest, the other thing with this pitch, selection when you don't throw a fastball to a left-hander or one you you can eliminate it and I think if he pitches again he has to change and have confidence in his fastball because he's a dynamic pitcher that loves the moment and it's a one-off for him so he got into a little bit of a funk how does this play out John well I, you know what I think the biggest thing that these teams have been able to show is punch counter punch I think the team that wins two in a row is going to win it I mean that sounds corny but nobody has lost two in a row in about 30 games or 25 games, this this advantage always has been a little bit given to the Houston Astros. Once the rainout happened, 
you could make the argument that Philly closed the gap because they could use pitchers differently. But the team that is the most patient or allows their starter to go a little bit deeper now is going to have an advantage of not running those guys out all the time. The more you see relievers in a postseason, the better it is for the offense. The less you see them and the more you can use high leverage, the better it is for that team. Where are you playing golf today? Lonark. I think I'm saying it right. This is where the first PGA stroke play championship happened. So there's a little bit of history here. Greens are great. I'm having a time in my life because I never thought I'd get this kind of weather in the postseason. You know, it's a good pregame ritual. Get my golf in, stay locked in, and then enjoy the great seat that I have in the booth. But did you play golf before a start in in any playoff game? Not a start, but I did play golf on the road in the World Series, in the playoffs. I didn't change any of my routines uh, when it was in between. And if I was a closer, once I was for three years, yes, I did play golf the day of the game because you don't know if you're going to get in. And if I can't get three outs at 10 o'clock at night, then something's wrong. Great to talk to you again, John. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dan. (laughs) Johnny Smoltz, World Series champion. He's on the call for tonight's game, Game 5, pivotal between the Astros and Phillies. That's uh, 8 Eastern on Fox.